Peter Weber is back on the dating scene after Kelly Flanagan split, while Victoria Larson opens up about her time on The Bachelor. She doesn't think that she ruined her chances with the franchise, that she was misunderstood, and that like the only reason she really brought out the queen, Victoria, is because she didn't have that connection with Matt. Blake Moyne spotted on the set of Katie Thurston's season of The Bachelorette. Blake was able to fall in love with Claire, fall in love with Tasha, and now potentially be interested in Katie. It just shows that he's one of these people the process is going to work for, whether it's legit right. or not. He clearly is all in. And Evan Bass slams trolls that say he and Carly Waddell are competing for their kids' love, as Carly's BFF Jade Roper reveals how they are doing post-split. Yeah, I think they're just trying to navigate what it's going to be like to co-parent together, but I think they're going to do a good job. Plus, Bree Springs reveals if she has any regrets for Matt James' season and tells us if you will see her in paradise. I think I need to see um, kind of some tangible change from the show in order for me to put myself back in that situation. We've got that plus so much more on today's Here for the Right Reasons. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Us Weekly Associate Editor Sarah Herons. Hi Sarah, how are you? Hi, Christina. I'm great. I feel like we have a good variety of news this week. Right. We like who knew we had so much Bachelor news going on. Even though the show is not running right now, they're they're still keeping us very busy. Just when we think we have nothing, they leak those pictures of Blake Moines. We get Peter responding to Kelly. It's it's kind of a good one. I'm kind of excited. It, it, I'm very excited. So let's bring it all down in our bracket of roses and kick it off with Peter, who opened up exclusively to us about getting back on the dating scene following his split with Kelly. And it seems like he's casually dating, right? Yes, casually dating. I also ran into Peter at Nemecolon for that Bachelor finale. That's party. right. <laughs> and he was very much, everyone was asking him, going up to him, just like pretty much asking him whatever they wanted. And he was just <laughs> answering. He was very nice. And they were asking him about Paradise or if he'd want to do the show again. And he very much was like, I'm on my own right now. It's mm -hmm. been an insane two years. I need some time alone. And I was like, Peter, that's the right answer. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It has been a whirlwind. Like if you, like it's hard to like kind of wrap your head around that in just two years, he was engaged, broke up with his fiance to get back together with his runner up. They lasted for a day. And then he dated Kelly for about nine months during quarantine. And they just recently broke up, get back, got back together and broke up again. So it seems like he's kind of laying low, enjoying his new life in New York. And I think that's probably for the best. Plus the Hannah Brown of it all, oh, which she was right. on Hannah's season. And then they brought Hannah on. His, I mean, he had like a lot of girlfriends. A lot. lot of girlfriends, a lot of girlfriends. And it seems like he's happy for Kelly. Like, you know, we said last week that they are not in communication anymore, but he did tell us that, you know, if she's dating other people, good for her. Yeah, he he played it very cool. I think that mm -hmm. was the right move, which we talked about last week. Kelly, she didn't say horrible things about Peter, but she right. was pretty open about their split, implying that it was kind of his fault is how mm -hmm. I read her podcast interview. So I think he took the high road here. Not, you know, no one, I'm not on anyone's side, but I thought it was interesting that he kept it as like happy for her whatever. Yes. Good. Glad everybody's moving on and doing their thing. And of course, if Peter starts dating anybody new, we will keep you updated. Yes, he said his person is out there and he feels really pop, ha happy in the city and positive. I'm like, he's Carrie Bradshaw out here trying to find dates in New York, like way too positive about it as someone, you know, it's not easy, Peter, but I'm happy for you. Keep that positive, buddy. Go get it. Um, we have to talk about Claire, mm. who we haven't spoken about in a, yeah. in a hot minute. Um, she did an Instagram live after you know she's out and about with Dale again in, in New York um, talking about the Bachelorette editing, editing process and she said that they need to show different sides of women and they don't and she didn't really feel like her love story or ideal storyline played out the way she yeah. wanted it to. I mean, did you feel that, that way? I mean, we kind of talked about that. Like she wasn't, she didn't really get the best edit. And, you know, it was kind of like, she was like so focused in on Dale the whole time. And, you know, I, I totally get why she, was, why she wasn't happy with how things turned out during her season. I do too. I mean, I struggle with Claire because I feel like we've seen her on a lot of seasons and she kind of gets the same edit, which means that is a side of her. They're not creating this character. She wouldn't keep coming back. Um, I do understand she was frustrated with them making her look like Dale crazy, Dale obsessed. Mm -hmm. She obviously spoke to other guys, but it just didn't fall with the narrative and there was so much to show in a short period of time. So that was a very edited 
couple episodes, but that doesn't mean it wasn't true of what the mm-hmm. feelings were. It just, they took out a lot of stuff for the storyline purpose. Um, but I mean, I just feel like well, we have a lot of footage of Claire and there are certain things that come out every season. And I think that that's just who okay. she is and that's okay. She's and that's okay. Honest. Yeah, no, totally. I would love to know like what she was really unhappy about and if she could kind of like break it down a little bit more because she really hasn't talked too much about her season. Like we really haven't seen her do any press or anything since right after she and Dale got engaged. And that was like feels like a lifetime ago right now. So I would love to know an update on Claire and what's going on. Cause they, we talked about last week, they've been so secretive with their relationship too. We need some updates. I know all she did was like, like shady tweets about editing at the time too. But then obviously in her interview, she was with Dale. So she was so happy. So they never really got to the bottom of anything. And it always mm-hmm. takes a little while after, you know, their contract is up. So we'll, we'll, we'll be hearing from Claire more and more. I think I'm I sure think. she's not one to hold back. So no. <laughs> she's dropping these little teasers for us. Well, maybe Claire, gave some tips to her former contestant Blake Moynes who was spotted on the set of Katie Thurston's season of The Bachelorette. Ben Higgins and Ashley I confirmed on April 1st that the former season 16 contestant is currently on location in New Mexico. I don't know. <laughs> Blake was okay. He wasn't my favorite after out of all the guys that were on that season. He probably would be like pretty low on my list to bring back. I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't really feeling it. I didn't really feel that he was there for the right reasons. <laughs> wow. And now we said it, you know, I think that I don't hate this just okay. because Blake was able to fall in love with Claire, fall in love with Tasha, and now potentially be interested in Katie. It just shows that he's one of these people the process is going to work for, whether it's legit right. or not. He clearly is all in. Mm-hmm. And it's it's frustrating if they ever bring someone back or if people go on the show and they quickly find out, oh, like I'm not, if this environment is going to be horrible for me. I'm never going to find love. And if you have someone who did it basically twice in a, in a couple of weeks, you know, he's, he's falls quickly. So right. I don't need that. And also I'm pretty sure one of his friends is on the season too. Oh, so that could okay. be an interesting little dynamic. If, you know, he helped his friend get on the show and then he decided he wanted to be with Katie. This is all speculation, but I do know that he knows one of the guys who might be on the season too. Oh, so wow. I, this might just be a way to stir the pot. Probably like now they're not friends. Now he's definitely not friends with this guy anymore. If they're both like totally after Katie. So a whole new, that's, that's something that, that the bachelor hasn't done yet is bring in friends to kind of compete against each other. So we only ever had the twins at one time and then they that's ended true. up being very supportive of one another. Even yeah. Though they, were both so they went on the same one on one day or the same, the two on one day. That was so awkward. So freaking weird. <laughs> um, and then also he, just the way this all came out with the Ben and Ashley, like knowing the scoop, like there's something here. They wanted us to know this information for some reason and have us talking about the season. And as always, it worked. I got excited. I got excited too. Now we are totally invested in Katie's season. And Tasha has been posting pictures from not from set, but from like location of where they are. So they're definitely moving along and uh, hopefully we'll get a premiere date soon, which is most likely what end of May, beginning of June. So right around the corner. I think the resort, is booked until May 2nd. Okay. So that probably means they're about halfway through, which is a good time to add someone if you are, because these pictures of Blake are from like a week ago, mm-hmm. which isn't totally, it's not Heather. It's not hometowns or tomorrow, you're screwed. Like, okay. which is good, because I can't do that again. That was so annoying. No, that was so annoying. I was not ready for that. Poor Heather. <laughs> I know. I mean, speaking of Matt James girls, Victoria has spoken after yeah. also being very quiet Mm -hmm. post her Good Morning America appearance, Women Tell All, Victoria Larson, the queen, of course, opened up about her time on The Bachelor and revealed she does not think she screwed up her chance for paradise. She's ready to go to the beach. I'm shocked. She is 100% ready. I'm well, she, yeah, she said that, you know, she doesn't think that she ruined her chances with the franchise, that she was misunderstood. And that's like the only reason she really brought out the queen, Victoria, is because she didn't have that connection with Matt. So... I don't know if she just like, so this is just a totally new persona and she was just having fun with it at that point. Cause she's like, Oh, I'm not here for love. I might as well make myself out to be a villain. I mean, the thing about villains in paradise is part of me is always like, why would you ever go back to mm-hmm. the show that, you know, whether it was accurate or not, you, you know, we're getting a lot of hate. I'm sure it was really hard. We, everyone was poking fun at you sometimes in good fun, sometimes too far as the show struggles to find the balance with mm-hmm. the fans. But then the other time, it's like, you, this is your redemption arc. And they usually do treat villains very well in Paradise. We see the turnaround quite often. So I guess I understand why she'd want to go. But a part of me is always like, why go back to the show that screwed you over? Right, yeah. 
It, that's so true. Another interesting thing, thing that she said that she did not think that Rachel was going to be the winner of the season. She was totally convinced that Brie was going to win Matt's, Matt's heart at the end. And I guess when she went home and like while the show was still airing, she heard the rumor that Rachel won and like couldn't believe that it was that Rachel had won for like a month, which I think is kind of interesting. That's so interesting. That also just goes to show again how she was on a different show. She like, was. She, I think everybody, although I will say when I talked to Brie, she said she was blindsided and she thought she was going to win yeah. too. Mm-hmm. But it, I just, I, to me, it was so obvious it was Rachel. I guess it was mostly things they didn't see. Mm-hmm. But it just like felt like Victoria was living on a different planet if she thought that she was like crushing the season. She didn't think Rachel was going to win. Like, I really think she was at a different part of the resort (laughs) than everybody else. (laughs) Totally. She definitely was. Well, very interesting. All right, let's talk about Ari and uh, Lauren Leyendijk. They are moving to the islands. They are moving to Hawaii and uh, they're bringing their growing family with them. I'm like, I think that this is their second home. They made it seem like they are permanently moving to Hawaii, but I think that this is just their second home, right? I think so. I yeah. really love them. It's kind of I crazy know. the couples that that last and the way you feel about them. Like I always mm-hmm. say things about Jordan and JoJo and be like, I don't whatever. And now it's like I they are my favorite bachelor yes. and like celebrity couple too. And it's mm-hmm. it's weird what we see on the show and what we think. And obviously Ari and Lauren were one of the ones that he like did the the flip or the switch up. And you never think that's gonna work. Never. And both Jason and Molly and Ari and Lauren are still together. So like, who am I to do anything but be like good right. for you guys? But even on the show, like I never really sensed that they had this really great connection. And you know, because it was, I mean, everything is the way in the edit. But like when they went on their one-on-one dates, they like they hardly talked to each other. So I was like, there's nothing going on there. But they have proved us all wrong for several years. They have twins on the way. They have a baby girl, Alessi. So you know, good for them. And you know, they're they living their best Hawaii, life. Now they're moving to Hawaii. <laughs> Jokes on all of us. Honestly. Seriously. Like, seriously. I'm home in New Jersey and they're moving to Hawaii. So good for them. <laughs> Literally same. Yes. Um, speaking of Ari, we had news out of Crystal Nielsen, mm-hmm. who was on his season. She has joined The Bachelor Baby Boom. She welcomed um, her first daughter with her boyfriend, Miles. Um, I spoke to her right before she gave birth and she said that she, you know, she had kind of a rough pregnancy in the beginning. She was had really bad morning sickness. It was really, she didn't really know how like to deal with her body changes and things like that. But she said once she got to like halfway through her pregnancy, she was like, okay, I can do this. I'm, I'm well, she had no choice. I could do this. So um, it's, it's, and she was having some pregnancy complications. She had to be induced early, but it seems like mom and baby are doing good. She's, that's another interesting one just because she was married to Chris Rangone, yeah. who's out here in Nashville partying with like the Victoria Fuller and all the, and Blake and all the classic like yeah. bachelor names that you hear now. Um, and they broke up and then she got pregnant pretty quickly and met this guy. So, I mean, like good for her, but obviously it was like kind of a, a one, something we didn't see coming. No, because her and Chris were only married for eight months. And I think only like eight months later, she was with some other guy with Miles and then got pregnant. So they might still we spoke be legally to Chris. married. Yeah, no, they were still legally, legally married. And, you know, we spoke to Chris. Oh, it's got to be like six months ago now. And he opened up about the divorce. And, you know, he, it was really difficult for him, like, because they were talking about starting a family together, too. And then all of a sudden, things kind of just blew up. So but it seems like, you know, everything's kind of worked out for the best. Yeah. I mean, speaking of bachelor breakups that blow up are cringe of the oh week, my right? God. Fringe of the week. Evan Bass and Carly Waddell. I mean, it seems like every week it's something new between these two, but he slammed trolls who said that he is competing with Carly over their kids' love. Take a look at this. So I posted on Instagram today and it was fun. And like all these people are like super rude on there. And then all these other people are super kind and like sticking up for me and saying really sweet things. And it just made me think about empathy. Like, I just like feel so bad for the people that are saying mean things. Like, is that weird? And like, I remember going uh, when I was doing the interview for Paradise or whatever five years ago. You guys are still watching this after five years of me on TV. It's so funny. And uh, one of my close friends now, who was a producer then, said, uh, "Evan, you can either take all the good and all the bad, or none of the good and none of the bad. You can't have it both ways. You can't take the good and the bad." And so for years, I just had that. Zero, zero F's given. Do not care what people say. 
I don't know. Like, I, I can't tell if like they're on good terms, bad terms, like, cause we talked about that weird text message that he posted between the two of them last week when he said that she has to marry somebody Italian or shouldn't marry something weird like that. Yeah. But he's, he's been very silent on social media for a while. And this was like his coming out party, I guess. Yeah, I'm very confused by him. I mean, she is like on YouTube and stuff talking about their divorce and her life all the time. So I don't know if he, that bothers him or anything because he's been very quiet but now he's kind of trying to take back the narrative but he's doing it I think he's trying to be sarcastic and funny and like engage with trolls but it's gonna come off weird and I don't think he understands that like because he hasn't said anything else it's like people are trying to decipher this like we're like are they on good terms but they must be at some I mean they both saw the kids on Easter Mm -hmm. he made it clear they weren't trying to compete with each other and somebody asked him um or that he was saying like, I know you guys are all on Carly's side because you have heard from her and I've been silent. So you just assume the worst or whatever. It's like, but now you're just making things more complicated with these like weird cryptic posts. Right. And back. So if you have something to say, say it, obviously like it's your right. But if you, or if you don't want people talking about your divorce, then maybe keep being quiet. Like this right. is just a weird middle ground. <laughs> it's a weird, it's really weird. Like one way or the other, just decide what you want to do and kind of be done with it. Because if you come out and just say your piece, we'll talk about it for a week and then forget about it. But if you keep like kind of just dropping these little hints, these little teasers every now and then it's like, then do you just want the attention? I don't know. It's, it's very strange. The whole video was just weird. Like the way he was talking and his beard. I don't know. Um, But I recently spoke to someone who knows them better than we do, which is Jade Roper, who Carly's best friend. Obviously they were on paradise together and crystal season. And she gave me a little update on how Carly's doing for the record. Her and Tanner also didn't understand the Italian text message, but she did have a little insight into how her friend is coping. So take a look. How is she doing? First of all, I know you guys do your podcast together and all that. Yeah. I think she's doing as good as she can. You know, she's really, I think, been trying to focus on herself and her self-care and her self-healing and just really um, doing a lot of things that make her happy. And I feel like that's really good. And um, yeah, I think they're just trying to navigate what it's going to be like to co-parent together, but I think they're going to do a good job. Yeah, I don't know if you saw Evan posted this like screenshot last night of their text messages of them joking about dating again. So is it safe to say that they have, you know, like a silly back and forth relationship on good terms with each other? Yeah, Tanner showed me that screenshot this morning and I was like, what does any of this mean? Unclear. <laughs> it's a very, I'm like, there, clearly we need like more context of the conversation because I was like, I don't understand. Um, but I think, I think that they're trying to really be amicable you know I think they're trying to because I mean this is his this was his second marriage so I'm sure he's taken what didn't work for him you know with his first divorce and um trying to learn from that so I think they're really trying to get along for the kids and probably just for themselves too imagine a couple years down the line she comes to you and she's like Jade they want me to be the bachelorette what do you say I would say go for it. I think Carly would be a fun bachelorette. And I mean, it honestly does work for some people. So I think, I think it would be great for her. I would, it's a crazy show, but I say go for it. What do you think? Do you think Carly should be the next bachelorette? I mean, I just like threw that out there because I was like, maybe, I don't know. We, the more we talk about Ari and bringing people back, those seasons do kind of work when people are removed and like understand the show and they're serious and they're older and they know how to weed it. I don't know. I don't hate it. I don't hate it either. No, I was, cause like at least you're like invested in their story and you want to see them kind of find love again. So I would be all for it. I like We've it. We've never had a divorced yes, couple and the person come back. Mm-hmm, totally. I, I hate it. I like it. I like it. All right, moving on to our Where Are They Now segment. Well, it's been just a few weeks since we saw Bree Springs get her heart broken on The Bachelor. The former contestant is looking forward to the future and possibly a spot in paradise. Yes, I mean, I'm all for Brie going to paradise. Yeah. She, mm-hmm. however, a little on the fence, but I caught <laughs> up with her recently after the finale. And she said, you know, the franchise needs to make some significant changes if she were to ever get her bikini and head to Mexico. And this is what she had to say about that. I have to ask, I mean, obviously another part of your storyline on the show was that you quit your job. Um, yes. Any regrets there? Any update on the job front? What, what's up? 
<laughs> yeah, no, okay, no regrets there. I don't regret allowing myself to open up to Matt and, and really fall for him. And as for my career, you know, my career was important to me and continues to be very important to me. And I'm hoping that I can take away lessons from the show and, and move forward and bring them into my next relationship with, with me and with what I decide to do. Um, I have really enjoyed this time you know, not working and I've been polishing up my resume and I'm open to to taking on new opportunities that, that come my way. So I feel hopeful and I feel excited about that. Is that a dating in paradise opportunity or are we, we're not ready to commit <laughs> to that just yet? <laughs> you know, I think I need to see um, kind of some tangible change from the show in order for me to put myself back in that situation. It doesn't mean that I've given up on dating, um, but I mean, maybe I've given up on dating on a reality TV show. I would like to see her in on Paradise. I really like Brie. I think she is almost too, I mean, I only spoke to her for like 10 minutes and I was like, you might be too smart for this show. Like she just had, every, she seemed like she had such good intentions. She mm-hmm. had love for both Matt and Rachel and everyone on the show and enjoyed the ride, but also was like, why did I get edited out? Like she, <laughs> she, she kind of got screwed. So she really she's did. One that I hope we see again. I do too. And I was always hoping that they would post like her videos online after, you know, when they cut her out of the after fun, nothing about that whole thing made sense to me. It's like the more I want to forget about that season, I keep going back because I still have questions. I need, I need answers. <laughs> so many questions to that season, but hopefully Brie gets another chance at Love in Paradise. And, you know, hopefully they announce soon who's going to be heading there because it's around the corner. I can't. I and can't there's believe. a lot of speculation. So I feel like it, it would be best for the show to maybe jump in and like, and make, make moves because a lot of people are talking there's already drama online which I mm-hmm. guess is what they want but it makes me think like there's real talks going on like it's, well, it's all it's all happening it's all happening and we can't yeah. wait we're gonna recap it all once it does go down but Sarah thank you so much for recapping all things bachelor with me thank you Christina of course who's on this week's uh, episode of the podcast oh we have Eric Bigger who was obviously on Rachel Lindsay season mm-hmm. he was on paradise he was on winter games <laughs> and a little yeah, he was on everything. A little tease for you. He said that he knew that um, Brian was going to win Rachel's season on day one. So <laughs> there sometimes you go. You know, sometimes you don't, Victoria. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. All right. Well, make sure to check out Here for the Right Reasons on Us Weekly's YouTube channel every Tuesday afternoon. For more on your bachelor needs, head on over to usmagazine.com. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and Sarah and I will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.